life. Wow. The entire heroine's fitting into one shot here. I know. We've made it happen. <laughs> you guys, what is up? How's everything going? Where the hell are you in the world today? What's up? Uh, right now, we are we're on our way to the Netherlands. We're near Dusseldorf at the moment. From Germany. Yeah, we're somewhere. We've just pulled over to do this. <laughs> you guys, well, you guys have been like everywhere. And it's so that's been because uh, I'm here in the Midwest in Missouri. So it's been hard to try to find like a, a good time because you guys are zigzagging all over Europe and trying to convert that time into like U.S. time. Is, but we finally yeah, both, made it happen. Both times we had this scheduled, I was on the Zoom an hour early <laughs> because I it was in my calendar as a U.K. time, which is an hour before <laughs> Europe. It was a whole shit show. So we pulled over an hour ago to do this and then realized that we, it wasn't time. <laughs> well, this is, hey, we finally, so glad we made it happen. Thank you guys so much for taking the time and to, to do this. It's so cool. I actually saw you guys in Kansas City here uh, last month, opening for Billy Idol. And so I, I literally started emailing your manager during your set because I was so... Oh enthralled by by what you guys were doing i was like i've got to make this happen this is so cool i know that tour was really cool for you guys uh kelsey just take us through it uh open it for billy idol you had steve stevens coming on stage with you guys during your set it had to be just an amazing feeling yeah it was it was crazy billy is personally one of my like biggest heroes as a as a musician as a um like stylistically fashion music everything and uh, I had released a cover, just me and guitar last year of uh, Alone from Heart. And Steve Stevens just randomly one day tweeted that, tweeted my cover. And so I took it upon myself to message him. And I just said, you know, if you, Billy, ever need uh, an opener, like we're, we're, we'd love to. And then a few weeks later, we got the offer. So I do attribute part of that to Steve because I think that he probably – was in Billy's ear a little bit and helped us help push it through. But yeah, it was fucking crazy, dude. Like biggest dream come true. And Matt, you agree? You had fun? Great tour? <laughs> me? I always have a great tour. Any tour is a good tour for me. This has been a bit, this has been a bit nonstop being in Europe because we've been, um, you know, going on month three on tour and it's just a bit nonstop. Well, the, the, the crowd, I mean, uh, so you guys played here at the Uptown Theater, a legendary venue in Kansas City. It was the most packed I've ever seen it. And I've seen uh, so many acts there from Queensryche to uh, Alice Cooper. And I, I've, it was the, absolutely sold out weeks in advance. And the crowd was in there for you guys. And it was absolutely deafening loud. Like I, I love whenever, you know, an opening band that maybe people aren't familiar with goes over that well. And I assume that happened all throughout the tour. That had to be amazing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the the next like kind of era of music, like the next album is definitely super 80s inspired and, and definitely in the same kind of world as Billy. So when we got the tour, like I knew how perfect a fit it was, even though like the past music may not fit perfectly with Billy's style. I knew that the next phase of music does. And um, our live show, I mean, you saw it, our live show is, is really good. And I think that we bring charisma and rock and roll and all these, you know, cool things. And um, I think that it doesn't matter what age or demographic you are, a good show is a good show. So really happy that we were received so well. Because it's an older crowd for us. Like, yeah, our fans are definitely younger. So it was cool to, you know, get them. <laughs> it was awesome, man. And uh, like, it's, 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 I go to a lot of shows, so it's kind of rare to be like that connected to, to a, a band that I've, that I hadn't seen before. And so, like I said, I was literally emailing your manager while, while uh, you were, I think right after you'd played alone, I'm like, I, this is insane. Like I gotta, I gotta make this happen. So talk about the heroines around you. How did you sort of connect with these guys? Uh, what kind of a dynamic is it? And they always say like, especially as you get older, that it's important to be in bands with people that you like and that you get along with first and foremost. So is that what we have going on here? Yeah, I mean, I I used to be a solo artist um, and I found these guys and they were a huge part of me wanting to create more of a band rather than just be on my own. Um, and I think it's like any relationship, you know, you, you're either compatible or you're not. 
you know, and I had never found in my career, in my life, musicians that I felt so compatible with. It's like a relationship, like a marriage, like a, you know, friendship. It's everything in one. It's the most intimate lifestyle you can be in with someone that isn't your, like, partner, you know? <laughs> so it's got to be, you know, things we've seen and talked about and experienced with each other. It's you got to be with the right people. But <laughs> <laughs> Tommy is actually my boyfriend's cousin. Oh, um, yeah. Wow. So that happened. We, we met like five years ago, five and a half years ago, and just immediately hit it off. And then I had an issue with uh, a guitarist that I was working with a few years ago. And Peach stepped in to just last minute for like one tour. And I was like, no, this is your the guy. So then we... <laughs> uh, being, I've just become better from Pete and then Seb funny enough bring my boyfriend into again um, Seb grew up with my boyfriend as well and his sister is actually my boyfriend's first girlfriend so it's just a nice little That's ancestral weird, <laughs> you know what I mean? wow. and then he joined, Seb joined the band and again like I had never felt such a connection with someone musically as I do with them and um, here we are what a great connection. So basically your boyfriend, you, you're in a band with three guys that your boyfriend's kind of cool with you chilling with throughout on yeah. tour and stuff. Yeah, I'd say so. They're all from the same place in England. So my boyfriend grew up in Derby in England and these guys are all from Derby, England. So I moved to England during the pandemic um, and I f also fell in love with where they're from. So now I live between... LA and and Derby. Oh, that is awesome. So yeah. for you guys, like, what's it like? Because Kelsey's she's a dynamic performer. She is like this alpha man, and she's puts herself out there. Whether <laughs> the look, it's all there. It's in your face, and it's freaking rad. So like for you guys, what's it like? Kind of backing up her. Seb, start with you, my friend. Uh, yeah, it kind of forces you to keep up with her. Book, I guess so. Exactly. <laughs> I've definitely had to step step it up. Oh, uh, so. yeah, he's, he's, I paid him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that the check clears. Sounds like that, but actually, she's pretty soft and lets us do what we want. Yeah. So. Yeah, the the whole alpha. I mean, yeah, I am an alpha, but. She does shout a lot, but yeah. um, not always at us. Yeah. <laughs> he's not talking about my performance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's just taking the piss, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you go and Tom, how is it like keeping up with me on stage? It's great, I really enjoy it. It gets you moving, it makes you, you know, it's you've got to keep up with her. It, it is, it's a good feeling, right? Did Kelsey, did you kind of de ha over time ha develop sort of I don't want to call it a character necessarily, but you know, the guys have already said that you maybe you're different a little bit off stage. I remember Alice Cooper said something that'll always stick with me. He said, It's not how you sing a song necessarily, it's how you present a song. And that <laughs> totally relates to you. Like, did you feel like you've kind of created and harnessed your character on stage over the years a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I think it's evolved. I, I don't think that any part of it isn't me, though. I don't think any of it is an act or inauthentic. Um, you ask any of these guys, if I don't like someone, I can't pretend I don't like someone. So I think that whenever it's, you know, it might just be elevated or amplified or, a bit more theatrical on stage but um that's my job is to entertain so essentially I don't call myself a singer or a musician or a songwriter I call myself an entertainer so when we get on that stage I just know I've got one job and but, but I do think that the misconception that happens a lot for me is that people think you can only be one thing people think I can only be like bad girl edgy rock and roll whatever but the, the reality is rock and roll is actually incredibly soft and incredibly wholesome and comes from an emotional place, not a hard place. And I am also that. So I think that's actually what makes me good at the theatrical, you know, hardcore stuff. Do you battle a lot of um, online haters and, and trolls and things? Because when you put yourself out there kind of the way you do some of the, you know, some of your photos and it just really elicits a strong response either way, do you deal with a lot of, backlash oh, to that oh yeah definitely what's that yeah <laughs> i don't understand it do people do people have a problem with like strong female personalities like putting themselves i don't really get it i don't really understand 
Why yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it, with the internet age, like everyone just, people are just cowards and they think that it's okay to go online and bully someone. I can, I can honestly say there are a lot of shitty things about me, but I have never in my life had the urge to, to comment something negatively to someone. So I don't know how those people are wired. I don't know what's going on with them, where they feel like the need to speak such a nasty opinion. But I have learned over the years of just dealing with it that you got to just giggle at it and laugh at it and be like, okay, mate, whatever. Like I try to just block that shit out and not, not listen to it. But yeah, I mean, you can't win because I have always been quite androgynous and length, you know, tomboyish. And I never liked male attention when I was a kid. So I dress like a boy and I have carried that into being an adult. Um, and I'm finally kind of at the point of my life where I really like to embrace my femininity and my sexuality. And, and I put that out there a bit more than I ever have. And now that's pissing people off. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, you can't, whatever, I'm just going to do me and comment what you want. It helps because then the fans come in and they like go to bat right. for you. And, you know, it's a, it's, you're that's what rock and roll is about. And I think that's what that draws people to it. And I love it. And the music really, uh, you know, I think um, exemplifies that you did a cover of uh, don't you forget about me by simple minds. Um, And it was actually featured in the 12 monkeys uh, fourth season. uh, The episode was called demons. Did you know that that song was originally written for Billy Idol to sing? He didn't do it for the movie breakfast. I did not know that. Yeah. I did that song. I did that cover for the show they asked me to do it. Um, but I did not know that. That's yep. such a cool, and that's crazy. And you yep. know what? I realized this recently because when we were naming the band, we we're trying to figure out all different, you know, things, that, possibilities. And i um, pretty sure Billy Idol's song, Heroin, we had seen that, and that was inspiration for the band name. Wow. So yeah, crazy. There's all these like weird links, but no, I did not know that. And that's a really cool, cool. Yeah, he he fact. finally wound up recording the song on his greatest hits album. So if you check that, you could check out his, uh, he has ah. does a cover of it on his greatest hits album. Cause he, he, I don't know what happened. He wasn't able to do it or didn't kind of pushed it on or whatever. And, uh, it's amazing what to think that would have been for that movie. Billy Idol would have done it. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of an incredible link. I, I, I wondered if that was on purpose or if you knew that or what. So that's, no, I did not know that. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, you guys got like a summer all on the road here. So what, you got some, you got some pretty big festivals coming up. Like take us through what the rest of the summer kind of looks like for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So we just, we've just, we're coming off the tail end of a couple of weeks in Europe. We did rock for people festival. We did South side and hurricane festivals. We've done, um, we went on tour with Less Than Jake for a few shows and then Palais Royale for a few shows, which the Palais shows have been like some of, honestly, some of the best shows ever. It felt like our headline stuff. Um, so that's been really awesome. And then we've got Rock Worcester Festival coming up, which I personally am very excited for because we're playing the same day as Liam Gallagher and he is my He's my whole past. So wow. there's that. Um, and then we've got the UK tour in a couple of weeks and another festival. Do we have another festival? 2000 Trees. Anyway, 2000, we've got a UK festival called 2000 Trees. And then, yeah, and then I'm coming back to LA and I've f- finished the album. It's like 80% finished and just, just been so busy. Haven't been able to finish it. For for the rest of you guys, Peach, going to you, back to you, man. Like when you are are touring and you're doing these shows, obviously we talked about Billy Idol. That was a huge one. I was able to see that. It was tremendous. But when you're going to all these festivals and there's these artists that are on it that you've grown up, you know, idolizing. Like, what's it like just sharing the stage with some some of these bands? What's been some of the kind of standout moments for you that like really touched you? Um, it's a weird one. Like yesterday, where was we yesterday? Hurricane. We were somewhere yesterday, yes, and we were at the side of the stage. And I turned around. And I went, "Oh look, there's all of Matt Bellamy's guitars." Yeah, and they were like right next to me. I was like, "This is crazy." I've been like playing his licks since I was like twelve years old, and there they all were, just racked up. <laughs> really. Yeah, and the rest no, of you guys exactly. have moments kind of like that too. Like I'm, I'm doing a good job to be on the same stage as them. It's yeah, really nice. you're doing a good job. Yeah, you're doing a great oh, job. I've been wow, see, with look that. at the positivity in this group. I just feel the the good <laughs> vibes. 
the rest of yeah, you guys. Yeah, we're a warm bunch. Yeah. Even after two weeks of being in each other's pockets. Yeah. We're still not one argument yet, has it? Not one argument. Yet. Yet. <laughs> yeah. No, they just do what I say, and then it's all good. <laughs> That's right. That's how it should be here. That's how. Uh, no, yeah, the... we've, we've definitely got we had a photographer we have a new photographer that comes on tour with us and we, we literally just dropped her at the airport but um she was saying she's like i she said to us yesterday she goes i've never been happier than these couple of weeks she's like you guys are just the whole crew like the whole group you have is just such an incredible group of people and we work so well together and you know this is i'm a big believer in being grateful for every single moment and I, if i died today i would be so happy because i get to wake up every day and live my dream with my best friends that i've made it do you know what i mean like that's all i care about that that means a lot to me as someone that loves music and someone that's become disenchanted a lot with uh with newer bands like you know i always say like in five years who am i gonna go see like every band i like is gonna be retired that's kind of that's the era i live right. in you know, I was at the Billy Idol concert for God's sake. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? So for you guys that there, there's a, there's a, maybe a responsibility there to continue waving that flag because there's not a lot of bands out there that connect with people in the way that you guys did. Cause like I said, I see a lot of shows and I don't always walk away going like, I need to connect. I need to go check out that band's back catalog or check out their yeah. first out, you know, but you guys have done that. So that that's gotta be happening across uh, everywhere you go. So there's a responsibility there that to maybe continue carrying that flag when other people are like, I just don't know about new new rock and roll or whatever. That's a big responsibility. For sure. And that was like a big thing um, for me personally in like writing the next album and creating the heroines because I felt like I was onto something that no one else was with what we had. I was like, this is unique dynamic. This is a unique group of musicians and the music that I wanted to create for the next album, I wanted to to also speak in a, in a new way, inspired by, obviously, I told you, like the 80s stadium rock, but into, you know, we're, we're, we're of this generation and we wanted to also appeal to the young, you know, the, the younger people and marrying those two things together yeah. is what the intention has been. And I think we're doing it pretty well without, without having to follow the trends that are happening. Do you know what I mean? Because everyone's like, Oh, I'm punk now. Like you don't just get to throw a pair of plaid pants on and learn a G chord and then call yourself punk. That's not how it works. So I think that we've just, we've found lightning in a bottle. That hey. That's, that's yeah. funny. You say that. Cause that's, that's kind of what I felt like in the early two thousands. Like when I was in high school and like all those pop punk bands came out, like that's, that's what I was feeling. Oh yeah. I've just hit a G chord and it's the same stuff, simple plan and all those. Your latest single, um, which came out about a month ago, Life Goes, uh, Love Goes On. Um, this this had a lot of different vibes to it. This was a little, I don't know, like a little more polished, a little poppier, a little peppier uh, than mm -hmm. say like The Devil on My Shoulder. So there's an evolution that's happening here with, uh, with your music. Just talk about that song and kind of maybe what it's leading to. Is that kind of a precursor to what the rest of the album is going to sound like? Um. I think that again, it's going into the thing like I'm where not just one thing and missing person was definitely written in a time of despair and depression and, mm. and darkness for me. Um, but I'm no longer depressed and I'm no longer heartbroken. And Good. I, I think that rock and roll should be fun and electric and exciting. And I wanted this next album to speak to all shades of who I am. Mm. um the dark the light the you know the sad the happy like everything so love goes on is just one color you know one shade that's on the album but it's a pretty sexy album it's pretty it's it's big it's it's electric it's theatrical i wouldn't it's not all like major and poppy like like love goes on is um but that is one shade that is one mood that's one part of part of me and yeah have to see what the rest is. <laughs> I, I'm mean, I'm waiting with bated breath. Yeah. Do you feel like that this album will really like solidify you and the and and the guys, the, the heroines, like as a band and and as a band going forward? Like you said, starting off as a solo artist, but recruiting these guys, being with them, being on tour, that this album will really like solidify you guys as as a unit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I don't, I don't. They make me better. Like 
yeah, so I, I write all the music and I am the brainchild of the operation, but I am nothing without them. And that's the way I see it. And I think that we're the kind of act that you got to come see the show. And I want to be the kind of act where you, you got to come see the show. I don't want to be a digital artist that just lives on the internet. And uh, I think that that's where the sweet spot is when an artist can actually show up on stage and it's not just on the record. You know what I mean? You come to the show, you buy a ticket to the show and you're going to get something even better than what you would get at home on Spotify. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's the intention. Hopefully, hopefully. With, with Love Goes On, I've been opening up that set list for the past two months with Love Goes On. Song. Yeah. yeah. Start the self jam as well. Yeah. So it's like a nice little but, twist on the actual. Yeah. And the whole like thing with the next album is um, it's kind of, the dark and the light, like the good and the bad. Like I had going back to what I was saying about people, their misconception of me thinking that I'm just bad girl or rebellious or unapproachable. Like that's not how it is. I'm also soft and, and a, and a good, you know, person and whatever and cry all the time. And <laughs> you know I mean, like you can't oh. write the music that I write without that. So I think this album speaks to both those characters and um yeah i don't know right yeah you 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 talked about kind of being depressed and heartbroken in 2020 i guess the truth of it is that we all were uh, i don't i don't know anyone that wasn't that was the worst year of my life I, that's what i do i travel i go to concerts man I, i'm out on the road i cover uh, sports here you uh, like american football um is a big part of uh, what what i do too so when it all goes away and there's no concerts and there's nothing, and there's no traveling and there's, it was horrible. I was like, I yeah. don't even know what this world is for me anymore. <laughs> like I'm just like a yeah. freedom loving, adventurous person that there's no bounds. And all of a sudden there was lots of roadblocks. And that was, so that was very depressing for me as well. I guess we all dealt with that in certain ways. Yeah, definitely. But it's funny, you know, cause missing person was written before that. <clears throat> and I actually started writing this next album during the pandemic. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like been pen, the pandemic was like half missing person and half daughter. <laughs> of, uh, sorry, I just almost said the album title. Um, <laughs> half missing person and half album too. They kind of like tap, tapped each other in um, during the pandemic. So yeah, I I, I saw the. Did you guys, um, and maybe the band could explain this a little more. You guys got uh, Billy Idol a gift, like a guitar, uh, after the tour was over. That thing was that like flame guitar. Like what? What was up with that? That was that was pretty rad. So, I wrote the album. We we wrote the album on that guitar. It's a, wow. it's called Minaret, the Minaret Guitars. That's the brand. Um, I'm really close with the guy, and he made me a custom Minaret flame. Uh, it's called the Inferno guitar. And mine's black and has it's bedazzled and says my name and everything. And um, I wanted to give Billy a, a present that you know was unique to to us and and the experience we had. And you know, I had I had some really good moments with him, which obviously you dream of, but you don't expect. And I just wanted him to know how much like the whole experience had meant um, to me. And so that. That Inferno, the, the orange one, we wrote the album on wow. and we were sitting in the studio and uh, my boyfriend was actually like, why don't you give him your Minaret? And I was like, <laughs> no, I love my Minaret. Like, I don't, don't want to give away that. It's got my name on it. Like, why would Billy want my, you know, my guitar with Kelsey Carter on it? And then I saw the one in the studio and I was like, hang on, this this is way more Billy Idol with the, with the orange. And uh, we wrote the album on that. And he's been such a huge inspiration my whole life i wanted to just give it to him and yeah so we did and he loved it, he loved it didn't he <laughs> yeah he, we gave it to him and then he was like we this should go on instagram and like we, we to start streaming straight away. started streaming on instagram yeah <sighs> did it again so i love moments like great. that and i love to know that like bands hit it off you know on tour and stuff like that and what a tour it was you guys um again it's it's just such a pleasure and i'm so excited for what you guys have coming forward and uh, hopefully get you guys back out here in America on, an, on another tour in an ideal world for you guys. What is, what does the rest of 23 and on into 24 look like as the, as you get the album out and what in a perfect world, yeah. what's it look like? Ideally the album get, I need to finish the album, get it out. Um, that's number one, I think 
and then just touring and doing big festivals. And we want to be a headlining festival headliners. Like that's what we want to do. You know, we want to be that kind of band and um, just, just do this. I don't know. Make music, make love, all that. Um, I support it. I don't want to stop gigging for at least a year. He doesn't want to stop gigging for at least a year. Well, a bit longer would be good too. Well, I'll have a little break, write a third album, then back on tour for another two years solid. There we go. Well, there's so there's your plan have... right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've got the whole plan. But yeah, that's um, that's kind of the the plan. Just just doing what we're doing. Well, guys, I you know I I hope you know what an impact you made at least uh on me and and the audience uh, here in Kansas City. Yeah. Can't wait to have you guys back because that was so badass. It was something that it left an indelible mark on me. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, Hell yeah. I consider we'll myself like a good litmus test. Like, Hey, yeah. if it like goes over well with me, cause I'm like, I'm kind of, I, I have a critical, critical ear, if you will. And so I go to a lot of shows and I review a lot of concerts. So, yeah. um, that was very meaningful. And the fact that you guys pulled over and have been trying to coordinate a time while you're in Europe, eight hours ahead of me means a lot. And for all you guys, oh. uh, the entire band, uh, major props. Cause like you guys absolutely kick ass and, um, can't wait to see what's next hell yeah we'll definitely be coming through yet there next year for headline stuff uh and we appreciate you we can't be we can't be pulled over on the side of the road in the middle of europe without people like you either so oh. thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much uh be safe take care and uh, we'll catch up soon thanks mate you bet. See you later. thanks Bye. Bye.